My name is Angel Valerio. I am the STEM Professional Learning Program Manager at KQED, and I'm going to throw it to Merrick to introduce yourself. Hello, my name is Merrick. I am a uh, high school science teacher down in uh, Southern California. I teach, um, it's, uh, it's about 20 miles east of LA in the city of industry. And um, I'm also a KQED uh, media, literacy, media literacy innovator. And um, I'm happy to be here today. Awesome. Uh, oh, and I forgot to mention previous to KQED, I was a high school life science teacher in Oakland, California, as well as an instructional coach. So also happy to be here. Um, thank you so much for everyone who is here. Um, we have a small group, but that means that we can go a little bit deeper into the work. Uh, I know it's 5.30 on a Friday. Uh, October is historically a really hectic month for educators. So we really appreciate that you are here. KQED is um, the public media station here in Northern California. We have an amazing education department that is dedicated to providing resources for teachers and students in media literacy. Um, if you have the slides open, and I think Merrick will put the slides one more time in the chat in case folks came in late, um, but these are all live links. Uh, KQED has two different platforms for teachers and students, KQED Teach, is our platform that houses our media academy. So if you're interested in professional learning, in media creation and um, other media literacy topics, uh, that's through KQED Teach. Uh, our Teach courses are also aligned with PBS's Media Literacy Educator Certification, which is a competency-based micro-credential program uh, where folks show they um, have eight different competencies um, that can name them um, an education certification. And KQED Learn is our platform for students. Uh, through KQED Learn, we have a showcase that we'll look at in a little bit where students can publish the media that they created uh, and share it with an audience wider than their classroom. Uh, and then we also have discussions where students can interact with other students from around the country to discuss about different um, topics. We also support PBS Learning Media, which is a platform where all PBS um, member stations provide resources through for K through 12 teachers. So um, if you have the slides open, you can click on each of these logos later to check out our different platforms. Today for this workshop, we are going to explore the power of video in science. Uh, I'm going to introduce to you what a youth media challenge is. Merrick is going to talk about implementing uh, science documentaries and video creation in his classroom. We'll also look at some of his student examples. We'll go over the video production overview and um, we'll have some time to brainstorm project ideas that you can do in your classroom. So before we begin, I would love to have a quick poll in the chat um, to know um, if y'all are familiar with or if you've done video projects in your class. So you can put a one, I'm fairly confident doing video projects with students. Two, I've done maybe one media project, but I wouldn't say I was confident. And three, I have not done a media project with students yet. So I'll give you some time to say that. Right, so Steven says three, Sarah says two. Wait for some more folks to chime in. Karen says in the past, she did one. Um, so it looks like folks are um, beginners in the process and that's totally okay. Um, I also, when I was in the classroom, did not uh, do video projects just because I was intimidated by the process. Um, but at KQED, we really um, 
we really cherish learning by doing. And so today we'll go through the process of what it takes to do a video project and hopefully you'll feel a little bit more comfortable in doing so. So now we're gonna explore the power of using video in science. Um, another question for y'all before we get in, just so we can ground ourselves in the topic of today, which is science documentaries. Um, what is a recent science documentary you've watched or a favorite that you've seen many times? And what made it interesting and compelling? So yesterday when I was listening to Dr. Mu during the, um, the keynote, uh, I saw that she was inspired by Carl Sagan. And I know for me, Cosmos was definitely a scientific documentary series that I watched when I was younger uh, and definitely inspired me. I see here, Karen says, fungi. I love seeing how trees and mushrooms coexist. Linda says, before the flood, real life examples, um, Planet Earth series. Lots of shout outs for fungi. So yeah, definitely um, some, some things that make documentaries interesting or compelling are real life examples of things. Um, and that um, allows it to be compelling. Oh yeah, the oct uh, my octopus teacher, Merrick, um, that one on Netflix. I started that one, I haven't finished it yet but it's really awesome um, to see the relationship that the filmmaker has with this octopus that they um, made a relationship with. Even yes, and to oh, High on the Hog as well. Yes, yes to that too. I've <laughs> seen that one. Show, cooking show High on the Hog. Yeah. yeah, anything David Attenborough narrates, totally. So lots of good examples and maybe inspiration to check out this weekend. Um, so you can continue thinking about science documentaries. So why we decided to focus on video is we really think that uh, video can help support the inquiry process in scientific, in science classrooms, right? Inquiry is based on curiosity about something that you observe. And so using video can help document observations uh, that you make in your life and then through those observations about something you were curious about, you can investigate and build uh, your knowledge around why you think that's happening. Uh, and through video, you can also explain that and, and communicate that um, to an audience. So KQED has our youth media challenges. We actually have seven youth media challenges. Today we'll focus on science documentary, but through this challenge, what we ask students to do is scientific topic and explain it through a video. So this can be an observation or a concept that they uh, see in the, they'll plan out their short video, they'll record and edit it, and then they are able to publish it on our youth media showcase. Um, if you have the links available, we have the curriculum resources here, as well as a student notebook that Merrick created when he implemented the project. Um, he will talk more about his implementation in a second. Um, but who is the Science Documentary Youth Media Challenge for? Um, it's open to grades six through 12. They're rolling submissions throughout the school year. And um, there are multiple points of entry uh, in order to center your students' creativity, deepen their learning, and uh, share an authentic, authentic voice because they get to choose what topic they would like their science documentary to be about. It is a free, modifiable, project-based media curriculum um, that's accessible to all middle school and high school students. So I don't know, I, I don't think I saw um, elementary students here. Unfortunately, um, we can't uh, accept submissions from youth under 
13 years old, but you can totally still do this project in your class. You just wouldn't be able to submit to our showcase. Um, this is a challenge. It's not a contest. And so all students who participate and want to publish their work can. We have our showcase where uh, their work is put um, on our website and anyone can search and see your students work and then we will select certain videos or certain voices to be elevated to broadcast here on KQED either digitally on our website or um, we also are a TV station. We also have connections with local PBS stations so I know like PBS SoCal and KCRW in um, SoCal as well and so we can also forward your students uh, videos to those stations and then see if those can get elevated there. Um, but enough talking from me, I'm gonna uh, give it over to Merrick and he's gonna talk specifically about implementation in his class and then we'll see some examples of what his students have created. Awesome, thank you, Angel. Um, again, so I teach um, regular biology and chemistry in uh, the city of industry, which is about 20 miles east of LA. Um, this is a picture from my classroom this year. So you'll notice the, uh, the UV filtration system, you'll notice the masks and everything. So this, um, that's, what, that's usually what I see Monday through Friday. It's what I saw earlier today. Um, I teach a 90% student population that qualifies for free and reduced lunch a pretty large uh, English language learners and special needs population. Uh, I tried this out during full distance learning in summer school, which we'll talk about in a bit. And then currently I tried it, or we started it this semester and I have a couple of examples or an example we'll look at as well from um, earlier this school year. And um, the big reason why I wanted to do this is uh, media literacy and science usually aren't things that like we think hand in hand, but with um, with fake news and, and, and a lot of um, I guess, misinformation in science. I think these are the skills that our, our students, we really want our students to have to engage in the world and to take those science and engineering practices and, and do something with it where they can, we can encourage student voice as well. All right, so take, um, so as I mentioned before, we did this once in distance learning and once um, in person. So take one, we did it during summer school. Um, I, we, decided to take a week of time. This was all on Zoom. So it was a, it was a, bit, a bit of a process. And we, I really wanted to let students just choose their own topics, whatever kind of spoke to them. And so um, here's an, an example. We won't look at it today, but you can kind of um, watch it on your own time later if you have a link. Um, and then I had students basically use a curriculum to create storyboards. And, a vi um, and I made a video myself as a reference for students to look at. So. We'll take a look at a video in the next uh, screen or on the next slide of, of an example that a student's made. So um, after we watch the video, um, feel free, or you can throw it in the chat if you see certain things that you want to highlight um, from uh, what you see in this video. All right, um, I'm going to play the video, so hopefully it'll work. <laughs> Hey, I'm Emily. Today we're gonna to be answering a question. How powerful are microwaves? We all have them. They're fast and convenient. What makes them so powerful is how fast they can cook foods in such a short amount of time. Not all microwaves are the same though. Microwaves have different wattages. Watts are a measurement of how much energy is used. The higher the wattage, the better the performance of the microwave. Let's take a look at a 1200 watt microwave. Because of its higher wattage, it works similar to an oven and can even safely cook raw meats. Now picture putting a frozen pancake in the microwave for five minutes straight. Yeah, maybe that wasn't such a good idea. Which is why I'm here educating you about microwaves in the first place. Point is, don't underestimate the power of a microwave. Ever. Hopefully now everyone can be safe when quickly cooking a meal in the microwave. So yeah, uh, that's just uh, an ex one of the examples from my students. Um, as you can see, um, for my classroom, I wasn't looking too much into the specific content. I was just looking for a way to take what we've talked about in class and, and basically communicate their own findings from their own experiences in a way that um, they might not be able to on a typical test or a typical um, like, uh, lab or something like that. 
So what we would love for folks to do now is just either unmute or you can see in the chat, what were some of the strengths that you saw in the science documentary? Um, what were some of the video elements that they used um, to bring their documentary to life? Um, and how do you think the narration contributes to the viewing experience? So Steven says, relatable introduction, quick graphics that get to the point across, gets the point across easily, um, short and to the point, definitely. Yeah, we, we really wanted these uh, science documentaries to be short explainers where students are able to introduce the topic, um, explain the science, um, and either have a call to action or um, some sort of ending where uh, you feel like you really learned something. So thank you for sharing that. Yeah, Sarah says, also like that it was short and clear without being overly complicated, totally. Um, Merrick, can you speak to how this student created the graphics? Did they draw the graphics? Um, how did they yes. do that? So this student decided to um, actually draw the graphics. So those, she, um, so, um, the student Emily, she's uh she's really big into art. So she and this is summer school um, remedial chemistry. So this is her second time taking chemistry. So we're trying to find different avenues just for her to explore. And to be honest, um, if I could have rated myself on a scale of one, two, three in uh, Angel's uh, second slide, I'd probably put myself at like a two or what, like maybe one point seven five or something along the lines of that. I'm not very familiar with um, media as well and kind of just. It's, it's with this, and we'll talk about this later, it's kind of just letting students kind of take um, what they feel comfortable with and kind of trying to let them run with it and, and see what they can produce. Awesome, thanks. Um, oops. Hey, oh, I'm Emily. Right. Today we're gonna to be answering no, a question. Emily. How powerful am I going to turn you off? <laughs> okay, um, and then Merrick is gonna talk about um, take two of uh, implementing side. Yes, so take two, this is in person. So we literally, uh, we just finished this up about a week or two ago. Um, we're using the, um, the Savas learning. So I don't know if anyone teaches chemistry right now, but we're in instructional segment one is all about energy, just different forms of energy and, and its role in, uh, in chemistry, or I, I guess interactions with uh, the earth. Yeah, so Stephen knows what we're talking about. Um, so this time we wanted, I tried to make it more content specific, uh, just create a science documentary on any form of energy that your school, family, or community can benefit from um, as sort of a capstone project after the instructional segment. Um, yeah, and then just trying to make, be more intentional about connecting it to what we're actually learning in class. And um, here's another example um, in which a student, well, we won't watch it, but well, um, a student talks about um, different energy usage when, um, when using uh, different apps on her phone. Um, in this video we're I'm about Daniel to watch is uh, about, <laughs> if we did, uh, if you're a science teacher, you might remember the, when you burn hot Cheetos in class to find calories. And this is his extension of that. And um, I, I we chose this video and you'll, Actually, we'll, we'll watch it first and we can discuss it. I'm Daniel and my topic for the project is why chips are flammable. So why are they flammable? All right, so chips are flammable because the starch and the calories in them makes them burn. All right.
was the explanation and experiment on why chips are flammable. All right. So, um, the quite if you, if you can you if you want to answer the question about strengths of the science documentary, um, you can. But if there are certain things that you might have noticed that could be improved upon, um, you can feel free to throw those in the chat as well. So um, as we're waiting, I'll just uh, jump in. So um, part of the, what I've kind of learned from the second implementation is that students, some, um, this is probably what I would say is more of a typical student response um, that um, I would get from students in which, um, like, like you said, Stephen, there wasn't really enough narration, uh, but they show a process and there's not really like a payoff as to um, and if they're constructing an, an argument from, with evidence, right? Kind of what, what's the payoff? What is um, if you have a you have evidence, but what's your reasoning behind it? What, what are we actually looking at here, and why would this be important to someone? And um, so, like um, <laughs> kids to light things on fire without the meaning behind it. Sarah, I completely agree. Um, so that's kind of um, so even making these small videos is a learning process in which um, clearly the student took something away from the lab that we did, but didn't really under, like or might not have understood what was actually going on. Um, with the lab and so it's a, it's a good point of reference for me as a teacher to check in but also to build off of so if we do um do these short video clips in the future um we have an idea of where we want to go and this is a learning process for myself and for the students as well so that's um not something i had considered before and um as steven said i'm also glad that he took safe safety somewhat uh somewhat seriously with the water so yeah so i it's um Sometimes it's a finished product, like what we saw with the microwave. Sometimes um, there's editing, refining, or even um, if the, the fruits of the labor might demonstrate itself uh, in, in later on down in the school year. And, and lastly, my top four takeaways if, on why I wanted to implement it. Um, like we said, there's a ready to go curriculum in which you walk through look, um, and we'll talk more about it, but brainstorming and um, writing a script to even learning the basics on how to, um, on, on different types of shots you can have and in, uh, in when you're making your media. Uh, it's really student choice. As you can see, some like to do graphics, some like to get in front of the camera and share their faces and, and do an actual lab. Um, there's teacher choice in terms of adapting the curriculum to all levels and circumstances. You can scaffold as much as you want. You could uh, provide sentence frames for scripts. You can um, give them specific guidelines of what you're looking for. And last but not least, uh, as a science teacher, we don't really have chances or opportunities. Or I didn't. I wasn't aware of any in which they can students can develop media literacy skills and encourage student voice, especially in um, for myself in a in a community. Um, or people of color and just kind of uplifting those voices who um which might not normally be heard or uh, seen from so yeah those those are my top four takeaways and um with that i'll throw it back to you angel i should yeah. know go ahead um yeah well you could throw it back to me we're gonna just um have some questions answered if you have any um anything that you want to say about the youth media challenge um or if you have any questions, please put them in the chat. Um, we are, I, the session time it goes by so fast. So we have about 15 more minutes and we also wanna go through the, the process of video production. So I'll wait maybe like 30 seconds if there are any questions. Um, and then if not, uh, we'll continue. Um, so, um, what we are going to go into now is the video production, um, process. Uh, but before we begin, I really want to encourage folks to, uh, create their own teacher model of, uh, a science documentary, um, especially because I saw at the beginning, some folks 
more of beginners, not experienced in creating videos. Um, at KQED, we really value learning by doing. And so um, we really encourage folks before you implement to create an own your own video um, to show your students. You can put yourself in their shoes um, and using your own experience creating the video, you can figure out what are the pitfalls or maybe what are the modifications that you need to plan for your specific group of students. Um, obviously we have our showcase so you can show students other examples of student created work um, and you can show an exemplar that you made yourself. And it's just um, a creative way to show your personality to your students. Um, these two videos here are videos that both Merrick and I created. I'm gonna show you Merrick's um, teacher model Psydoc that he created for his students. So you can have an idea um, about what something is that you might create. Hey there, this is Mr. Chang. And I want to talk to you about something a little bit weird. I want to talk about my toilet. Okay, so that's not actually my toilet. But this one is. And it's still kind of gross. It turns out minerals from our water supply in Southern California can form deposits on surfaces such as toilets. A couple of weeks ago, I did some online shopping and found something interesting that claimed to be able to clean my toilet. Pumice stones. According to scientists at UC Berkeley, pumice stones are lightweight, glassy, and porous volcanic rocks. They come from underground volcanoes, which produce magma and cool quickly to create a material that kind of looks like what you see here. Let's see if it works. Additional research online suggested that because the pumice stone is harder than the mineral deposits, but not as hard as the porcelain toilet, the minerals could be scraped off the surface without causing serious damage to the porcelain toilet itself. Kind of like when you scrape gum off a sidewalk. And yes, that is my dog in the background making a nice cameo. So what's the final verdict? It works. So now we know hot magma spewed from underwater volcanoes, when cooled, can be used to clean toilets. Go figure. Awesome. Whoops. Hey there. This is Mr. So um, that's just an example of a teacher model that Merrick created, but we really encourage folks to um, put yourself in your students' shoes and create something yourself so that you can um, see what it feels like and share it with your students. Um, Hey there. We're not going to look at mine right now in the interest of time, but uh, I wanted to share that this is the video creation process. Um, today, we are not going to be able to go through every single step of the process, um, but we included all of the slides that you would need or that you can reference for each of the parts. So if you decide to do the Youth Media Challenge or if you decide to create videos in your class, then um, you can see how we formatted it. We also have uh, a ton of resources around it as well. Um, so for pre-production, uh, ideally, if you're starting this process with your students, it's a good idea to analyze examples similar to what we did. Show them student-created videos, show them your teacher-created model, um, and then you decide on your topic. So today we'll do a little bit of a brainstorm for folks to just uh, think about what would be a topic that you would like to create for your students or even a topic that you would like to implement for your students in your classroom. You got to research your topic, then you got to write a script and storyboard um, so you can plan the footage that you need. Um, production wise, you would gather your footage, record your script, organize your footage, um, and then post production wise, you would have to combine all the footage together and edit it, adding titles and credits um, and music if you wanted. Um, and so uh, we're going to give folks mm, not the five minutes because it's already 601, but maybe uh, a minute or so to brainstorm what would a topic be that you would like to create for a teacher model so you can think about what topics you need to teach your students. Um, anyways, what is a core concept this year that you want to explore, why do you love teaching the content that you do, uh, what do you wonder about. Um, 
that you think your students would be interested in? Um, and how can you connect science to the world or community issues? So um, you can put that in the chat. We also have this topic brainstorm graphic organizer that you can check out later. Um, I'll give folks about a minute or so to just think about uh, what were some, what are some topics that you would uh, potentially create uh, your science documentary about? So Linda says natural disasters. Yeah, setting goals to minimize human impact on global issues. Yes, totally super relevant to what's happening right now. Short PSAs like on washing hands. Yeah, definitely. I mean, obviously with COVID too, there were a ton of PSAs about washing hands, but that's not just for COVID, that's for all the time. So definitely short PSAs, I think that would be really helpful. So I'm just gonna quickly move along. So we have resources for you also for scripting and storyboarding. Um, <clears throat> for scripting, uh, you we generally, because they're shorter science documentary, um, about 90 seconds or so, we generally have our students describe the topic, explain the science, and uh, based on what their topic is, they can wrap up with a call to action or um, just wrap up with like, now you know uh, about this particular uh, topic or concept. So that was similar to Emily's microwave script. She had a question about microwaves, explained it, explained the science about wattage. She had some tips and recommendations about how to use the microwaves and then had a quick wrap up. Um, so after you figure out your script, then you would go to storyboarding where you were thinking, you would think about the shots that you would, um, your, the shots that you would gather or create. Um, but I do want to say that there are different ways to communicate video in science. Um, in Merrick's example, you know, you saw him use the pumice stone on his actual toilet, um, but obviously we can't always directly capture on film um, the footage that we need. So if a student had a topic about space or animal behavior about an animal that um, does not live in their area, um, then you can't have that footage. So uh, you can decide to communicate via a narrated slideshow where uh, students are gathering still images and narrating over it. You can also have them use a model or a drawing that's similar to Emily's where she drew the microwave. Um, and you can, like I said, actually use footage for the explainer or you can do all three. We have some resources here for gathering footage if you're gonna do that live that we're not gonna watch. Um, we also have some about lighting and audio. All of the lights. All right, so, whoops. Um, and we have one about finding copyright free images. So if you don't have the slides, definitely, um, I'm gonna have Merrick put them in the uh, chat one more time. Definitely look through these. We have tons of resources in here. Um, also, some resources about how you would organize your footage. And then finally, before we end, I just wanted to talk about video editing. Um, we There are a number of uh, video editing programs that you can use. If at your school you're lucky enough to have Apple computers, uh, iMovie is a free program that's already on Apple devices that's really easy to use by for beginners for basic video editing. Um, if you are like most school districts, you probably have Chromebooks. And so you would use WeVideo or Adobe Spark, um, which are online video editing programs that are web-based. Um, 
we have at KQED a partnership with We Video, and so um, if you decide that you want to go the We Video route, uh, you can get for up to 150 students and yourself a six-month premium account for free. Um, you can access this offer through this link here, um, and so yeah, um, Merrick put that in the chat, which is great, but. Um, you just need to activate it whenever you feel ready to it because it's only six months. So um, if you did it from today, it wouldn't be until um, the spring. Uh, and so if you wanted to do the project in the spring, then um, maybe you would activate it in January or February or so. So we definitely have that partnership and feel free to use this offer. Um, we have a checklist uh that is in this powerpoint that you can use to help your students go through we video we oops we also have a checklist for adobe spark um so literally your students can go through each step um if they need help signing on and getting started and when it's time to publish they can publish on our Youth Media Challenge Showcase. Before we end, because we have two more minutes, I'm just speeding by. Um, typically in our video media making workshops, we have our teachers go through the process of creating videos for themselves and creating their teacher model. Obviously this was a 40 minute presentation, so we didn't have that time, but we are gonna have our workshops in November. So if you're interested in diving deeper and actually spending the time in the tools and creating your own um, science documentary, um, you can register for our free media making workshop that we're actually co-hosting with Nova. And so we'll talk about how to go through each of the uh, processes of video creation. So we'll spend time on scripting, storyboarding in the video tools. Um, and so you can register for that. Woo, so we got to the end. Thank you so much. I know I went through the, the end really quickly. I just wanted to show the whole process of um, video production. And like I said, we would love for this to be more hands-on. So if you're interested in learning more, please register for our long form um, workshops. But our information is here, Merrick's information, my information. Uh, we have one more minute. And if anyone has questions, um, please feel free to put that in the chat. And then Merrick, if you have anything else that you want to say before we end. I'm, I'm good. Um, yeah. Um, was the workshop for complete beginners regarding video production. I would say I first learned about this through a workshop. And to me, um, video production was, a, I was a beginner as well. So yes, I would say it walks you through um, creating the script, coming up with the ideas, but also um, like the second half is, is the nitty gritty of like actually producing a video and what steps to go through and, and what, are, what, are, what are some available tools out there for teachers. Totally. So um, our KQED workshops, our long form workshops are two two hour workshops. Uh, and most of that time is work time. I know that time is very precious right now for teachers. Um, but if you're able to make it, um, then you can hold yourself accountable to actually doing the work to create your own uh, teacher model science documentary. Um, so you feel more prepared for um, implementing it with your students. So um, it is 100% beginner friendly. We will go through every single step of the process um, and talk you through it. And you have other educators there that you can um, collaborate, collaborate with as well. So I know I'm one minute over. Um, after this, I'm gonna hop into our KQED virtual booth. So if you have any more questions, uh, feel free to just go over there or we'll stay on uh, until like 6.15 or so in case folks wanna stay back. But thank you so much. Like I said, I know it's the end of the day on Friday and um, 
you know, it's been a long week. So, and it's been a long October. So I appreciate that all of y'all are here. Feel free to reach out to us if you have any more questions. All right, have a good evening. <laughs>